Well, hey everyone, and welcome to our physics homework tutorial. Uh, we hope you find this tutorial helpful in your study of physics, and if you do, please visit our website at www.physicsvodcast.com. There you're going to find over 200 physics examples in every topic of physics. Uh, it's sure to help you get through that physics homework. We'll see you then! Alright, Sioux Falls physics teachers back again, this time looking at the first law of thermodynamics. So now we're going to take that amount of work and combine it with internal energy and with heat. Uh, for this problem we have two processes and for each we want to determine whether those three things are positive, negative, or zero. So we'll begin here with process one and again usually we want to start with the amount of work. In our equation for the first law, looks like this, delta U is equal to work plus heat. And again, work is probably the easiest one to start with because it comes directly from the graph. Remember that work is equal to negative pressure times change in volume. And because we have a graph, we can see what that change in volume is. Notice that for process one, we are beginning here and moving to the left, which gives us a negative value for delta V. So if we look over here at our equation then, if we have a negative value for delta V, multiplied times a negative in the equation, then that means that work must be a positive value. Okay, so that's the first piece here. Because our gas is decreasing in volume, work is positive. The next thing that we usually move to is delta U. And remember that delta U is related to the temperature. And we again have an actual equation, um, basically three halves times n r delta t. So if we know what our temperature is doing, then that will allow us to figure out what delta u is doing. Now notice though again we have two different points on our graph and we can use our ideal gas ratios. So PV over T at point one must be equal to PV over T at point two to figure out what's going to be happening to our temperature. Notice that for process one, pressure is not changing. So that would not be part of our equation. And notice that we again have a decrease in volume. So if we begin with a temperature value here, we must have a lower value at the end. So in other words, if the volume here is going down, the temperature at this point must also be going down as well. So for process one, there is a decrease in temperature. And if there is a decrease in temperature, then there's also a decrease in internal energy. And so that means that delta U, or internal energy, is negative. Okay, finally, we're going to do heat. And again, remember that heat really can be thought of as sort of a process of elimination. In our equation, if we have a value for work that is positive and a value for delta U that is negative, the only way for this to work out is for Q to be a negative number. And in fact, it needs to be a relatively large negative number because it's going to, first of all, cancel out work and then give us a negative answer for delta U. So by process of elimination, using our first law of thermodynamics, we find that Q must be a negative. So for process one, we have positive work, negative delta U and negative Q for our quantities. Okay, let's look at the uh, second process now. Uh, this one's a little bit different because our pressure is changing, but our volume is staying constant. So uh, let's first of all again look at the work that's being done here. And we've said that work is equal 
to the area under the graph. Well, if I have a vertical graph here, I do not have an area under it. So because volume is staying constant, the work that's being done is zero. So I have no work being done as a result of this process. Okay. Uh, the next thing that we'll look at then will be so our delta u then we need to see if it's going to be positive, negative, or zero. If the pressure is increasing, remember our relationship here, pressure times volume over temperature, and we need to have this both at the beginning point here and at the end point, and those ratios have to be the same. So P1, V1, T1 has to equal P2, V2, T2. In this situation here, again, our volume is not changing, so we can essentially eliminate volume from consideration here. We're really only concerned with pressure and temperature. So as the pressure increases in this process, the temperature must then increase to match that. So that then in turn makes delta U a positive value. Now we're down to heat. Heat is, again, kind of the result of the first two. So as you think about our equation here, if we have a zero value for work, a positive delta U, the only way that that can be possible is for our heat to also be positive. Thank you.